In this video, I will take you through every step of the way to bootstrap a new custom art store from scratch. Oh, we're turned yellow! I myself am currently running multiple successful personalization stores specialized in selling art. But what if I had to start all over again? In my opinion, the whole dropshipping model is pretty unsustainable. When you're trying to send customers products from China, it is incredibly hard to build a long-term profitable brand. You have zero control over what's been sent out from China. These things always break, this thing's always unsteady. It's a piece of crap, okay? You don't even know if the customer will actually receive the product. Customers saying their online orders were never delivered, extremely delayed, or empty if you can believe it. And in my opinion, it is just too much to process when you're just starting out. Now don't get me wrong, it is a business model that still works, but branding is definitely harder. Now selling personalized art is what I see to be one of the most profitable business models in 2022. It's awesome, it's the real deal. The whole model can easily be overcomplicated. Let me make it super simple for you. When an order is placed by the customer, all you have to do is forward the order to the designer who will then illustrate the desired art file. Once it's ready, the designer will send you back the art file which you will then send over to the customer as a digital file with Gmail. So you have 100% control over what's been sent out and when it's been sent out. Now you can even upsell a frame poster, a pillow, mug or whatever you can think of using a POD company. Okay, before we start, I have broken the video down to four fundamental steps to get your store off the ground and running. The first and arguably the most important thing is the product we are going to sell. Now, obviously art, but what kind of art? What's the art style going to be? For the purpose of this video, we will focus more on the yellow character art style. But what I like to do when searching for an art style to sell is to go on a website called Fiverr. And from there, just keyword search. For example, custom portrait. Now the key here is to sort the results by best selling. This will give a good indication on what are the top selling art styles at the moment. Now just spend some time on the research and try to find something that you might be passionate about selling. This custom pet portrait listing has over 1000 reviews. So it means there is a high demand for this product. Once you have found something interesting, then try to find some companies that are already selling this product. Our objective here is to find out if this company is actually making some money. Just try to find anything that reflects on their success. Reviews, social pages, whether they're running Facebook ads or not. Sometimes I even go as far as making an order on their website to see how much sales have they made. Now the order number indicates on how many orders have they received. When taking an estimated AOE of $50 and multiplying it by the order number, we get an estimated lifetime revenue of... Now trying to go out there and sell a product like this or this and expect massive success is highly unlikely to happen. Because these stores have already built their brand around this product and spent massive amount on advertisement. But there actually is a way you can sell the same products successfully. This is the method I have been using to create my own stores. Let me explain how. But before that, please subscribe to the channel. Also, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And now, back to the video. Now, pretty much all of these big companies are advertising with Facebook ads. Uh, I, I, am, I am not a lizard. And most likely targeting worldwide audience. Now, usually Facebook algorithm will pick up countries that interact the most with the advertisement. And then it will start to push the advertising budget to these countries that have shown interest in the ad. When using a Chrome extension called Koala Inspector, you can actually see what these countries are. For example, with Turned Yellow, we can see that the audience is mostly from these countries, which means they have just barely scratched the surface of the other countries. We can easily have a piece of that massive success by selling exactly the same product but to a more narrowed down audience. This method is so untapped and has been working for me with pretty much every single store I have launched. Now, when it comes to designing the art, you obviously have to find designers who will draw your orders and it is 100% manual process. The way I go about finding designers to work with is once again hopping over to Fiverr and just search for the art style you are going to sell. Once you have found some promising designers, just shoot them a message like, hey, would you like to work with our yellow character company? We have a lot of orders. And 95% of the time, the answer is yes. Now you don't want to make your orders through Fiverr because Fiverr takes a fee on every single order. Instead, ask if the designer is comfortable going private and 
from there you can actually give a test order to the artist which they will usually do you for free. You can even negotiate over the price per person and at that point they are a part of your team. When you're starting to get a lot of orders then just repeat the process and expand your team of artists to the point where they can easily deliver the orders within days. Now usually drawing of one person will cost you around $5 and you can mark it up on your store for even as high as $50. Also this product has huge scalability. The customers can actually choose how many people would they like to get drawn yellow. And for example, let's say a family of four would like a drawing of themselves in this yellow looking art style. That's already $140. And it's going to cost you only $20, leaving us with around $120 straight profit from one order alone. And I know it's possible because I have even made as high as $500 from single order. And if that isn't crazy enough, you can even upsell a printed poster along with the digital file to stack up the profits even more. When it comes to upselling a printed file, I recommend using Printify or Printful as your POD companies. And it is a manual process. So each and every time a customer wants to order a printed poster, you have to hop over to Printful and fulfill that order manually. Our next step is to get the store up and running. Now when you have decided to narrow down on a non-English country, then you can hire someone from Fiverr to translate your store and build a long-term relationship with them. Also, Shopify offers a wide range of languages you can choose from and have your store automatically translated into your desired language. When it comes to building the store, our objective is to build a minimal conversion oriented store. At first, there is really no need to spend hundreds of dollars on website design as you can improve it along the way. And it usually costs me only $50 to launch the stores. But now, let's talk about reviews. Reviews are one of the most important aspects about your website. And obviously, when starting a new store, you don't have any customer reviews. But what I like to do is to get these reviews from my competitors' websites and usually I aim to get around 100 reviews on a fresh store. Just to give a customer the needed level of confidence before purchasing. They put you in jail, right away. No trial, no, no nothing. Once the orders are consistently coming in, you can get these reviews from your own customers. And that also leads us to the next step, which is applications. The most important personalization apps I recommend to use are bold product options that allows you to set up your product page options, including the box of notes. Secondly, looks reviews for making your page look trustworthy and collecting customer reviews. And lastly, upload kit which allows the customer to attach photos to the order. We have spent hundreds, even thousands of dollars on website development, but when just starting out, these applications will do the job. Next step is to set up your email flows. Now email flows can easily be overcomplicated. The only email flows you need when starting are abandoned cart and welcome series email flows. Inside the abandoned cart email flow, you want to have a discount code that will get the customer to finish the purchase they have left behind. And inside the welcome series, also a discount code that will give the customer one last push to make the purchase happen. When it comes to the design aspect of your store, Really try to see what the competitors are doing and do not reinvent the wheel. Just create a similar looking store because it has been already proven to work. Next step is marketing your product. Personally, I have found success using Facebook ads. One huge advantage when advertising in smaller countries is the low level of competition, which means you can show your ads to more people with spending less money. Just look at one of my traffic campaigns that has a cost of 0.09 euros per link click. Usually I create two different campaigns, one for conversions and other for driving traffic. Inside the campaigns, the ad sets are super broad with no detailed targeting, mainly because the targeted audience size is barely 1 million. I'd recommend to start detailed targeting once the target country audience is around 5 to 10 million. Usually I create three conversion oriented ad sets, each with a daily budget of $10. When it comes to ad creatives, I highly recommend shooting your own creatives. You can let the designer draw a picture of yourself, have it printed and use it as an ad creative. When just starting out, use automatic placements so that Facebook algorithm can decide which placement works the best and therefore start pushing more money into the working placement. I usually leave the ads to run for about 7 days without making any big changes to them. Mainly because it takes time for Facebook to find the right audience to show your ads to. The first few days you most likely won't see any life changing sales coming in. But as more time will pass, Facebook will start to show your ads to people that are actually interested in buying your product. And therefore your sales will increase too. 
After 7 days, kill the low performing ad sets and increase the budget on the working ones. If you don't have any sales after 7 days, take a step back. Check over your website, add creatives, create a new campaign, but now using the data that Facebook has provided you from the last campaign. If you have made it by this far of the video, congratulations! I will now give you my tips on increasing sales and organizing orders. I have studied the leaders of this business inside and out, and I know exactly what makes them so successful. Once you start getting some orders, I highly recommend you start using Trello instead of Gmail. Trello is a perfect application for managing your orders. Inside the Trello, you can customize the whole workflow. Mine consists of five different sections. Orders in progress, completed orders, orders sent to customer, revisions, and revisions completed. So once an order is complete, the designer will drag it to the completed order section where you can download the photo and send it over to the customer. Now all of the bigger companies selling custom art will at first sell you a digital file of the drawing. And after the purchase, they will give you an option to have it printed for a pretty crispy price. Now I have a slightly different approach to this. When a customer adds the order to the card, then they will automatically get an upsell pop-up offering a frame poster with a slight discount. If they decline the offer and pursue purchasing just a digital file, then once it's ready, I will then inside the order completed email, send them a link where they can have the digital file printed with us. Integrating this to my store has significantly increased the average order value and overall profits in my store. The application for the upsell I mentioned before is called Discounted Upsells. Now one of the fishiest things that all of these art companies have in common is offering fake minus 50% discount all year around. Now I think offering a minus 50% discount is only good for short term profits. But if you really have passion about your company, I would not abuse the minus 50% discount. It will lower the trust that you have built with your customers and it is just not sustainable. At first, I stepped into the same trap, but I quickly realized that it's not doing any good for the company in the long run. It did somewhat increase my sales, but it's up to you. If you are in it for the long run, I wouldn't consider it. But if you just want to make some money right off the bat, by all means, go for it. And that is it for this video. Let me know in the comments if this video was any helpful to you. Hopefully, I answered some of the questions you had about this business model. But if you have any questions still hanging, leave them down in the comments below and I will happily answer all of them. And I will see you in the next video.